So we want to start off with the sermon this morning, uh, this evening, because um, we really just want to give some time tonight. Uh, I'm going to speak on spontaneous worship. Um, so let me start off with this. If, if you guys want to put up that picture for me there. I don't know about the rest of you that are mar- married, but in our marriage it definitely works that way. That For me, I'm more spontaneous. I will decide. Um, the, I used to drive the kids crazy. So what are we going to do on the public holiday? And uh, Then I don't know. When I get up that morning, I decide, no, we're going to do this, you know. <laughs> Um, but Renee is the one that loves to plan things. It's got to be properly planned. So in many marriages, you have that. You have the, the, the person that loves planning and will plan to the detail. I know that Christian is one of those. He's told me that when they go to the Kruger National, he plans it out. Every single minute is being planned out. And um, the other guys say, no, well, we'll see when we get there. Um, so maybe some of you, can relate to this next uh, statement. Listen to this. Uh, Someone once said, he said, I was spontaneous once. It didn't go as planned. (laughs) So many of you maybe feel like that, and then you you experience that tension maybe in a a relationship. But but when we speak on worship, when we talk about worship, we, we can say that, you know, there's also this sort of tension between structured worship and planned worship and we know exactly what we're going to sing, where we're going to go to the next key um, and and spontaneous worship where where we allow some room for what the Holy Spirit wants to do and and our own spontaneity that comes through because that's important. That's what I want to speak on tonight and and just touch on. So so listen to this. There's, There's space for both in our worship. Paul writes in Ephesians 5 verse 18 to 20, he talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, he, he says don't, don't get drunk of, of wine, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to, uh, to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. There's three types of songs that he referenced to here. The, the psalms that he's talking about is the Old Testament. Now, we read Psalm 23 or Psalm 38 or whatever, and you know, it inspires us. But they used to sing it. That was what, what it was written for, was, was to sing. Remember, they didn't have a New Testament Bible back then. The Old Testament was the Bible. And so they would sing out of the Bible. But then they also had hymns. And these were more structured, longer compositions of praise and of worship and other types of songs that somebody would Right, would literally sit down and write these hymns that they would sing. But there were also spiritual songs. Now, think for a moment. All of these are spiritual songs. Psalms is spiritual. It's Holy Spirit inspired. The, the whole Bible is Holy Spirit inspired. Um, the hymns, the person writing that is inspired by, by God. But the spiritual songs that he's referring to here is, is really just songs that they, they would in the moment, the Holy Spirit would just spontaneously just, it would be born out of the, the Spirit. And people would start singing and, the, and, and you know, and, the, and they would just follow the, um, whoever was leading at that time. So there's all three of those type of songs uh, that they engaged in while they were worshiping. So we are talking, when we're speaking about the, the worship and the way we're looking at it, we, we're using Revelations 4 as our reference. And that's that, that beautiful picture of the four creatures that's surrounding the throne of God. Revelations 4 verse 7, if you guys want to put that up for me, it talks about four creatures. Um, we started off, we're working from, from the last one, we're working back. We started last week, we spoke on the eagle. Um, tonight we're going to speak on the the, uh, the human face. One of the creatures had the face like a man, another translation says. And another one like an ox, and, and eventually we're going to, last one we'll speak on, on the line. And so tonight we're speaking on the face of a man, human face. And it's, it, it's representing spontaneity in the context of worship. And you might ask, why spontaneity? Well, if you look 
if you look at an eagle's nest, um, they all look the same. I don't know when last, have you had to look at a picture or at an actual eagle's nest? They all look the same, okay? Uh, it's like there was a blueprint and it was downloaded, you know, into their memory banks and that's all they do. That's how it looks like. A sparrow's nest, most birds, if you go and look at it, it looks pretty much the same. But I have a look at when, when humans build their homes. I know you have these blocks and blocks of flats or townhouses, they look all the same. But in the larger picture, you have, you, you can see the creativity. You can see, you know, the, the spontaneity within, within people. And when you go inside the homes, you see, you see that even more. <laughs> you know, the creativity and the differences of what's important and what do I love to make a feature. And, and, and if you look in all of creation, spontaneity in mankind is on a way another le- level than any other creature. And there's a reason for that. That's the way God made us. I want to come back to this idea in, in a moment, but, but let's look at Revelations 4 verse 8. It says, The four living creatures each had six wings, were full of eyes around and within, And they did not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. So that's the picture. These four creatures, full of eyes. Now for your your creative ones, I know you're seeing that picture and it's maybe a scary picture for you. But, But yes, the reality, these creatures could see everything. Having eyes all over. I said this morning as well, it reminded me of my mom. You know, she, she seemed to have eyes all over. She knew exactly what, what I was doing or what I was up to. Um, but, but these creatures could see everything. And it's, it's so beautiful because with all of those eyes, they could look at God and they would, they would call out, Holy, Holy, Holy. And then the 24 elders would jump up and they would lay their crowns uh, down at, the, at the, uh, the throne of God. But if you think about this, imagine we did that here in church, and we just, throughout worship, that's all we sang. It's holy, 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 holy. You know, for some, that would be awesome, because you get it, and it's not about the words, but for most of us, we, we would say, you know, this is getting boring, you know, it's, what happened to the worship team? Didn't they practice or what's going on? You know, what's, it's so mundane. It's, we know what's coming and this is all we're singing, okay? And, um, and, and, and so, you know, you might be wondering, why would the 24 elders, every time the, these creatures did that, when they would start shouting, holy, holy, why would they get all excited and, you know, just lay down their crowns at, at the throne? Well, here's the story is these four creatures, these four living creatures, with all the eyes they had, they would look upon God and they would shout holy. And holy means in both in the Old and New Testament, in in Hebrew and in Greek, it it means, it it references to to God that's different to anything anything else. There's nothing like God. It it talks about to be... be, uh, to be put aside, you know, to, to, to be different, to be holy. And, and, and shouting out to God as we, we're calling or we, we're saying in that, God, there's none like you. There is none like you. And so he, he has these living creatures. They have eyes all over. They can see everything. But every time they look, you know, they see something different that just excites them, something of the wonder of God, of the of just the majesty of God, just this, the beauty of God. And they would cry out, holy, how awesome, how different, how beautiful is God. And the 24 elders would respond to this and say, wow, we didn't see that. And they'd jump up and they'd lay down their crowns. And then they'd repeat that because they'd see something different. Think about this. There's no picture, no definition. There's no word that we can use to say this defines God to its fullest. If we have this picture, if we have this statement, 
That's how we can define God. And, and when we speak that or when we see that or when we hear that, we now understand God's fullness. We know that the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But that talks about His character, His love, and His grace will never change. But in who He is, He is sovereign. In who He is, in, in, in his, when He reveals Himself to us, there's a newness and a freshness about God every single second. Throughout eternity, we will never grow bored with God because He is so great and so big. And so that's what they see. This is what the living creatures, that's what they, um, uh, they pick up. And God reveals this. And then when they start singing holy, the 24 elders respond by just laying down their crowns, just responding, the spontaneous response to what they are seeing and experiencing. You and I, we don't have, we just have two eyes each. Okay, so we don't have that many eyes that can see and, and respond to, but what do happen when we corporately worship like this is, um, is you will see something, you know, about God and, and, and just become aware of something of the revelation of God in that moment of worship and it excites you. And then I see something different, <laughs> just for where I am and what God is doing in my life and, and, and there's a, this revelation and, and it excites me. And, and then that guy sees something and then the next, and then Quibus is on stage and he's leading us and then he sees something and then corporately we are reflecting something of what's happening in front of the throne room right now with these living creatures just worshiping God. In Genesis 1.27, it says that God created man in his own image. We are cre created to reflect the image of God. We are created to reflect, um, you know, when God reveals himself, we, we can see something of God when we look at mankind. And I've thought about this, and, and you know, if, how do you reflect something that, that's changing constantly? You know, just the, the character of God that, that cannot be, be summed up in this one thing, that can't just be reflected by this one revelation. How do you do that? Well, it's in the spontaneity of mankind. It's in our creativity. It's in our uniqueness. This is why we were created to be so unique. So unique, not only in our fingerprints or, you know, the, the way that we are put together, but in our thinking, in, in what goes on inside of us. You know, our creativity, even if you think you're not a creative person, believe me, you are a creative person because you were created in God's image and He is the creator of all things. And so that creativity, that spontaneity, every time when something of that is revealed in a worship context, something of God is revealed. I've mentioned this before, this just something so special in, uh, in the worship for me because that's how I met Jesus. That's how I came to give my heart to, to, to the Lord. It's just in that moment watching the people around me worship and just experiencing that moment of creativity. You know, when somebody stands in the crowd and you're worshiping and, and th there's this, this revelation like the 24 elders, they lie, laying down their cro crowns because the, the creatures were, were, were shouting out, holy, holy, holy in these these elders, they receive the, the revelation and they respond to that. When that happens in the crowd and, and people just respond, there's different ways of responding. Some will cry. Some will lift up their hands. Some will just smile. And you can just see the peace that surpasses all understanding all over them. It's written all over them. So, so when that happened to me and I witnessed that, I could see that in other people. Man, that grabbed my heart and that changed my life. And so, in that spontaneity, as we are doing that, as we are just being spontaneous in a moment, worshiping God, uh, it reflects something of God's beauty. But here's the thing with spontaneity, is that it can't be duplicated. 
It's not a copy and paste. Oh, that's, this is how we do it. And we'll give you the 10 things to do in the spontaneous moments. And then, you know, we know that we, we've got that covered. No, it's just, that's what the word means. It's being um, s- uh, uh, spontaneous in the moment. Just what's, what's on your heart in the moment and what you're experiencing in the moment. But having said that, there is three things that we can almost put them in those categories when we think about being spontaneous. Now, I said this, this this morning as well, as, as sometimes when we talk about this and we experience the, the tension between planned worship and spontaneous worship, the guys that love the planning part, the guys that are structured, they, they get a little bit nervous when we talk about being spontaneous. For one is, you know, when Quibber starts just, when he says, use your own words and just sing your own words, you're like, hmm. You know what, I don't know what to sing. I can't, I, I don't know even how to stay on the note, you know. It's, and, and, and you start feeling awkward in that, in that moment. But it doesn't have to be awkward, man. You don't have to actually um, sing something out loud, you know. <laughs> you could be praying silently. But engagement is key. It's not to stand there and wait and say, please start singing, please start singing, please start singing. <laughs> But to perhaps to close your eyes and just engage, even if you do that silently. So for you guys that get, get nervous, here's what spontaneity is not. You know, it's not going crazy um, in a service where people start making somersaults and, you know, and um, yeah, just doing crazy, crazy things that breaks down what God wants to build up. Okay, so as soon as you take away attention from Jesus, then I don't think it's, it's, it's the right thing. Okay, so if somebody spontaneously feels I want to take the, you know, the, the communion and just start spraying everybody with, with the communion, as, uh, I, I, I'm not so convinced that that's what God wants you to do. Okay, so when you're spontaneous, something that should be a leading factor in this that would help you lead you in this is will this build the worship will this build our being together is it uplifting in in, in my spirit so sometimes this morning actually we had a purpose i don't know if you picked up on it but somebody um just within the audience just had this beautiful voice and unless it was an angel <laughs> but just this beautiful voice and was just harmonizing with you guys just Harmonizing, not singing words, but just harmonizing. And that's lifting everybody up. Now, if I try to do that, I promise you, you know, you guys won't be, won't be um, happy with that. Um, so so that's, that's what needs to lead us in this, is whatever I do. So you might ask, well, what do I do when we talk about s- spontaneous moments? Well, let's get into these three things quickly. The first thing that I want to mention is... is I call it I say. It's, it's the word that we speak. This is people that, that just, you know, they feel God works when, when they're in discussion with somebody and they talk about Jesus and, and as they're speaking and, you know, just telling that person of what God has done in my life, they feel the presence of God at another level. We all do, but these guys aren't just on another level. It's when they can speak about God. And when in, in, the, in the worship context, when they sing, they will start singing other words. Or in the moments where we just have just the instrumentals, they'll, they'll use words. And often those words would be filled with Scripture. You know, they'll, they'll start singing about, um, about uh, the, the, the still waters. Or to be still and know that God, it's so good to be still and know that you are God and They'll, they'll, they'll use scripture as a way to express what's going on inside. Or just words that's, you know, that's meaningful in that moment. So they'll be audible in, in doing that. Um, they also, when they look at the, at, at the screens, you know, they, they, they look at the words and certain words will stand out and will grab them. I'm no longer a slave to fear. And I'll look at that and I'll see longer and I'll say, God, I know I'm longer in your context. Bad joke, bad joke. (laughs) 
Sorry. <laughs> uh, short, longer. So, um, now they look at that and they, uh, they will, the word fear will grab them and say, I, I do no longer fear. You know, fear plays no role in my life anymore. And they sort of just, it stirs them. The words would stir them. Um, and so if, if you in that context, um, then typically... I would, I would motivate you to, in those moments, and even while, you know, the band is, they're on the chorus, and they're there, and you have this word that's just ringing in your, in your mind and in your, in your spirit, it's, it's start singing that out. Don't shout it on the top of your lungs, because, you know, they are on another platform, on another level, and now you're singing, you're just going to, somebody's going to lose it, and not sure, you know, where are we. But softly, in your heart, and you know that's why the music is a little bit, a little bit louder, um, just so that you have that opportunity to sing softly something that God is playing on your heart, and, and especially the moments where where the worship team create that little bit of space for spontaneity. The second thing is, um, I call it, I see. These are the people that they they experience God in creation. You know, when, when, you, when you're at, at the ocean and you look out over the waves and there's, you just, man, you feel the presence of God. You can see God in creation. These are the guys that in the service, they will look at the screen and, and they'll pick up on images on the screen and God will start speaking through that to them. You know, they'll see the cross or they'll see uh, the person just standing there worshiping or whatever picture we have on there. And that will inspire them. That will bring something of an um, understanding. God is here and He's speaking to me. They'll go to the, to the communion tables and they will look at the way that whoever did the, the communion tables and it, it would speak to them and it would inspire them. So visually they are stimulated. And, and these are the guys as well. They'll look around. So, so you know, when a person is looking around, I don't think he's... It's just spying on everybody. Is they are stirred when they see you worship. When they see other people in those moments of, of worship, it does something with, within them. Um, and so they can respond to that. And the way they would respond to that is usually also visual. Is they, would, they would cry or they would smile. Or you, again, you will see the peace just coming over them. Um, there would be a visual response to uh, just this creative. Maybe lift up their hands or maybe kneel down. There's normally action that would, would accompany this. The third one is the one that uh, is linked strongly to the Holy Spirit. I feel. Some people, they, they want to sing it, say it. Some people want to see it, experience it. Other people want to feel the presence of God. Now, perhaps it's just important here to say that, you know, we... We ju don't just work on feelings. That's not what that's about. Uh, God's good even when we feel differently, even when we feel sad or, you know, um, when we're in a difficult space, God is still God. But people that are extremely sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we all should be, but, but you do have those prophetic people that they just right up there, sensitive to, to what the Holy Spirit is doing and saying, and um, they'll experience, especially when in corporate worship kind of thing, is they'll experience a picture or a word from God. And, and perhaps, you know, uh, in worship or after the service, they will approach that person and just say, Hey, listen, Quibbis, I saw this picture in worship and I just want to share this with you. I'm, I'm experiencing God is saying the following. Um, and, and if that happens for them, that's, you know, God has moved. Something great happened. And so, if you're in that category, then, then in corporate worship, in that spontaneous times, that's a good time just to be quiet and to listen and to allow the Holy Spirit just to bring that word or that picture or whatever that is that God wants to lay on your heart in that moment. Maybe He wants to speak to you. Now, although all of us would lean to either one of these or two maybe, I want to say that God works through all three in our lives. God wants to do, work, speak to all of us and do something incredible in, in all of our lives through this. It's just the way 
that we are, are stimulated, just the way that we engage in those moments. And so what is spontaneous worship? Spontaneous worship is just when we, when we just step off the program. Just step off the, we know we sing three lines here, we go to the chorus, and then we know we go, go to from G8 to G9. Not. Okay. Uh, go to the next chord. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's when we just step out of the, the planned thing. Because, you know, life, we can plan, it's good to plan. You know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You all know that, that saying. But, but yes, the reality, life, just it happens. It's spontaneous. It's the way God created us and life and things. He did not give us the exact plan that we know tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock exactly what's going to happen or where we're going to be or what we're going to be busy with. We, we can plan it and we're probably going to hit more or less. But when that spontaneous moments happen, it's because God's built that into us as human beings to display His splendor and His beauty and His omnipotence. And this is why it's so critical that we do allow some of that to be reflected when we, when we praise God and when we worship. And, and try and get over yourself. You know, when the moment feels awkward, try and get over yourself. Again, even if you just close your eyes. Close your, close your eyes, not close your eyes. Close your eyes. Open your Bible. Um, if the lights are off, take your phone, open your app, your Bible app. <laughs> Uh, and, and read a portion of Scripture if there's nothing else that you feel you can do. But let this spontaneous moment be a reflection through you of who God really is. And so tonight we want to do that, and that's why we set it up so that the worship can be um, uh, at this part of, of, uh, of the service. So you guys are welcome to join me on stage. But we're going to intro this with, with just some with, with um, the communion table and I want to invite you to just go and take the communion and, and um, the band's just going to start with a spontaneous moment. There's, in other words, it's not going to be structured, not going to be something singing something specific. It's going to be music. But it's not just music. It's spontaneous worship. Your reflection when you take the communion, when you when you use the communion, when you say, thank you, God, it's a moment of worship. And maybe in that there's something that you want to pray for or trust for. So that's how we're going to start off. And then we'll move into a portion of structured worship. And, and we'll move into some spontaneous worship and structured. And, and we'll end off with, with a solid set of spontaneous, just we planned the spontaneous worship. <laughs> um, and it's going to go as planned. But what we didn't plan is how it will look like and um, what's going to happen there. And uh, so we just, we just want to be in the presence of, the God, of God. So let's move out to the, to the communion tables. They, on this side and that side of the auditorium, get your communion and just start off with being spontaneous. Let's move out to the tables. Thank you. Every 
It's a God who saves One who is strong and mighty Freedom is in His name Open the gates of heaven Lift up the shout of praise There is a lion roaring Jesus the King of glory So lift your eyes Stand in awe, stand in awe There is one, only one Where my help comes from There is a King of glory There is a God who saves One who is strong and mighty Freedom is in His name Open the gates of heaven Lift up a shout of praise There is a lion roaring Jesus the King of glory